like Mrs. Jones The guests eat marmalade with buttered scones Oh me, oh my At Mr. Lake's what do they munch? What do they munch? What do they munch? What do they munch? Oh me, oh my! At Long Chili's, what do they crunch? What do they crunch? What do they crunch? What do they crunch? Transferred to Newgate Prison. All the details. Extra special coverage in the Star. Robax the Cutthroat Transfer. <laughs> Just imagine, my dear Percy, when I write my article. I say, by the Times, read about the modern Babylon by Geoffrey Barrymore. Good old Geoffrey. I don't suppose there are hordes of Times readers in this neighborhood. <laughs> in any case, old stick, I don't mind having come along. Our little expedition into the depths has been quite informative. <laughs> oh, oh, Jeffrey, the handkerchief. You see that lad? Yes. Let's notify the police. Now look here, Christopher. Did you know that on average some 344 lace handkerchiefs are stolen daily in London? That's what poverty will do. Every human being confronted with acute and prolonged need inevitably becomes actively or passively a criminal. An irrefutable assumption. No, Jeffrey. Poverty in itself does not produce criminality. I would be willing to wager that even in a neighborhood like this, full of thieves and beggars, a pure soul would be able to resist all temptation. <laughs> I bet you would lose, Christopher. I assure you. <laughs> Aren't you hungry? How about a nice hot potato? Eh? <laughs> hot potato? <laughs> you really are one for the book, old chap. <laughs> All you have, gents. All you have. And hot potatoes, too. <laughs> <laughs> there you are, Governor. Oh. <laughs> Sir, your watch. You dropped it. Yeah? This is your watch, huh? sir. It fell out of your pocket. Did it? Yes. yes. My dear, what's your name? Olivia, sir. My name is Orson. Brother and sister? No. And your parents, where are they? We're orphans. Where do you live? On a boat at St. Catherine's Docks. How do you manage? Oh, we catch rats. Uh, we get a uh... shilling apiece on Pembroke Street. Don't say anything. I think they're coppers. Hmm? Who, us? That's right, both of you are. Don't take me for an idiot. No, no, I'm a journalist on the Times. That's why I'm taking notes. Come on, let's go. He's lying. Can we have a hot potato for one shilling, please? There you see, they returned my watch, though they're starving orphans. Hmm, they returned it because they expected a reward. No, Geoffrey, I must insist I think those children returned my watch because they have both remained honest despite their poverty. I guarantee you, if it had been a fiver, you'd never have seen it again, Elving. Geoffrey, <laughs> hmm. let us submit them to a little test then. Suppose we arrange it for them to sort of find a large banknote worth a certain sum. Then uh, we How know... about five pounds sterling? <laughs> Not a bad idea. Not bad. Then we'd know which of us is correct. Perhaps five pounds isn't enough. Let's say twenty pounds. It's a bet. And the loser has to buy a first-class champagne dinner, right? You're on, old chap. <laughs> I tell you, they're coppers. Coppers don't talk good like they do. Well, I never saw a worker with a gold watch. They're journalists. Hey, don't cut the pieces too small. Journalists do have gold watches. <laughs> journalists? 
Around here, there aren't any stories for him. Nothing for a journalist to write about here. Well, that's true. Not like the Darby at Epsom. Don't cut him too small, Olivia. Oh, be quiet. I make him perfect rat size. Help! Huh? Help! Help! Thieves! They're after me to steal my money! Hold on! It's for an operation on my little girl, Geraldine. You understand a matter of life and death, this operation. Bring this money tonight to 22 Tudor Street before 7 o'clock. Oh, my goodness! There they are! Oh, drat! We've been spotted! Get him! Go on, Falstaff! Get him! Go on! Whoa! Whoa! Ah. Whoa. gotta return her money. Of course we have to take it to her. Hmm. Look, it's open. Do you suppose we could take a look? Yeah, sure, why not? Go ahead. Uh, uh no, you look. If a dog spots us, the game will be up. <gasps> Holy cow! Holy! Count them! One. Two. Uh, three. Four. Six. No, five. Six. Seven. Nine, ten. <gasps> There's more than ten. How many of you got there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <gasps> There's ten here too. There's ten and another ten besides. So how much is all that? Um, I figure. Uh, I figure. You think Teddy could figure it out? Teddy is good. But he can't count that high. How do we get to Tudor Street? I don't know. We'll ask. Come on. How much is left from yesterday's rats? Well, enough for uh, one herring. Oh, a herring. Or a sausage. Oh, it doesn't matter. Hey, you got the envelope. Mm-hmm. You know how much an operation costs? Um, I don't even know what it is. <laughs> it's when a doctor cuts a hole in your belly. <laughs> but only a little tiny one, right? Anyway, a little hole can't cost two times ten pounds. <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> The lady never said that she needed all the money to save her little girl. Mm, you want to go in here? You mean, uh, just to look around, sort of? I'm a little girl too, Orson, aren't I, right? Um... What would you like? Two chocolate eclairs. Mm -hmm. And we'll take uh, two eclairs on vanilla, as well as uh, two pieces of cake cream puffs, too, and we'll take two jelly rolls. And we'll take two extra chocolate eclairs. And have you any money? Oh, your two pure hearts are giving in to temptation, old chap. <laughs> I would say you've lost the wager, old man. <laughs> we shall wait until tonight. 
I may yet be the winner. Perhaps. Come along. We've no further business here. <laughs> oh, Christopher, what I like about you is you're such a good loser. I'll get that cash. There's somebody under the floor. It looks like Ray. He hangs around with the Prescott gang. Hey, Ray! You want one? Uh, I am. I was only. Uh, I'm. I'm looking. F well, I better go. So long. <laughs> I guess Ray must not like cakes. <sighs> oh boy, that's what I call a nice round belly, all right. Mm, when is it we return the money? Mm. Oh, not until seven tonight. Regret, madam. <laughs> I must have my twenty pounds first. Oh, I've got a stomach ache, Orson. Oh, me too. It hurts. You think little Geraldine's really going to die? Might. It's our fault. Yeah. We have to take the money to her mother. Only it'll be just a little bit short. Is it a lot? Yeah, it's a lot. Two pounds. How many shillings is that? That's, uh, I figure it's uh, four times ten shillings. Four times ten rats? But the most we ever got was ten in one day. <laughs> Oh! We've got till seven tonight. I'm going to do the sweep. <gasps> it's too dangerous. Babyface almost <gasps> suffocated. He almost died when he tried the sweep. Because he's too fat. Anyway, Geraldine won't almost die. She'll die if she doesn't have the operation. Then I'm going to hunt rats in the back of the slaughterhouse. <laughs> you, Bobby? You know they're big as a bull with horns. They're worth two shillings on Pembroke Street. We have no choice. We'll hide the envelope here. Ugh, nobody will find it. We'll meet on Pembroke Street at six, all right? Good luck, Orson. Yeah, don't worry. Arguments and brush the corners. In you go. You're wasting time. Come on, brush harder. You good for nothing, girl. Run! Be careful, Falstaff! Think of Geraldine. Get power, lazy bone. Wait, wait, I'm stuck. I know a way to get you unstuck. <laughs>
all we can do here, Falstaff. Five rats from Dog's Island. Well, that's ten shillings. I sure hope Olivia made more than we did. You're five shillings short. You get ten shillings no more. I swept all five, and that makes five times three shillings. Ten shillings. When you got stuck, you wasted a lot of time. Dirty thief! Dirty good for nothing. Bah. Well, two times ten shillings, uh, I figure that's one pound. We're still missing one. Whatever we've got, we'll take it to Geraldine's mom. We'll tell her we just lost one. Geraldine oh could die because of the one that's missing. Well, I'll go catch some extra rats. We don't have enough time. Talk about good timing. He's too skinny, and besides, he's all white. He's still worth a shilling. Why does he look at us that way? He looks like he's a little lost. Now, where did that little mouse go? <laughs> yeah! Bravo, Orson! Ah, huh? ah, ah, thank you, young man. Thank you very much. Well done. <laughs> Um, Thomas Henry Huxley, naturalist of the British Museum. Oh, it's my rat! But, but but the fact is, I've been chasing him for more than an hour. Well, we're the ones who got him. It's a little show below al albinus, a very rare specimen. It's for Geraldine. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, she'll die. Geraldine? Geraldine Champlain? Um, uh, uh, Geraldine Chaplin is totally incompetent. She, she, she criticized my book on the hydrozoa of the ocean, and she is diametrically opposed to the theories of my venerated colleague, Charles Darwin. Who cares? She has to have a hole in her belly or else she'll huh? die. I must have this, Sir Milot Albinas. What do you take in exchange? Uh, well, a shilling. Two times ten shillings. Two times ten. That's a pound. Mm-hmm. All right, it's a deal. Ah, my little mouse. Ah, my little happiness. <laughs> <laughs> Geraldine is saved. Geraldine is saved. Well, I'd say, my dear Percy, that it's certain that I'll win our wager. <laughs> Not necessarily, old man. I believe there's still one hour. Come on, Orson, we'll be late. Get a move on. Let's go. What? <gasps> Have you got it? The envelope, uh, it's gone. What? Are you sure? Yeah, it's gone. It isn't any place. That's impossible. No sign of it. It's just disappeared. But it's not right, or son. Matches! Buy a box of matches! Good matches! Right here! Buy your matches! Thank you, sir. Thanks, mister. Get your matches! The best of all matches! Matchless matches! Buy your matches here! Buy my quality matches! Hello, Orson! Hello, Olivia! Yeah, hi. So, I hear your pals with Ray the Sting? Huh? Ray the Sting? Yeah, uh, Ray the Sting! We just saw the guy! On your boat! Three chocolate eclairs, three jelly rolls, and six cream puffs. Ray the Stink! What do you kids want? Milk? Chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> no, we want the money you stole from us. Who says I stole your money? Somebody saw you take it under the water. <laughs> it was under the barrel, not under the water. And how do you know? Uh, uh, well, <laughs> listen, you kids. That money is mine now. It's for a little girl who needs an operation. Go and steal from the rich, but not from the poor like us. Right. Let's go, pals. Let's give these punks a lesson in manners, right? You're on your own. We don't want to know. If you get a problem, you work it out. We'll go 50-50 on it. How's that? No way. We want it. Come on, naturally you'll get it. It was, just, it was a big joke, right? I did it for a laugh. There was no harm. And now you'll have to agree. I win. Quick, it's nearly time. 
there are still a few seconds, my dear Barrymore. No, no, there's no Geraldine living here. Let us in. Oh, we have to save her. Oh. Madam, your money, here it is. Geraldine is saved. I win, old man. I win our wager. One can be honest in the lower depth of old London town. Oh, by all my ancestors, I didn't believe for a moment they'd actually return it. <laughs> Bravo, old man. You win. <laughs> uh, the cops. It's about the watch. No, I'm not a policeman, dear. I'm a journalist with the Times. Oh, and Geraldine? You remember the two thieves? The two thieves with beards? That was us. Quite a good disguise. <laughs> what, what, how, how, how. My, but your dog is insistent, I must say. And Geraldine and her operation. In truth, there is no Geraldine here, my dear. I, uh, my husband and his friend had a bet, and how can I put it? They wanted to find out if, uh, well, if you'd return the money to us. I'm afraid it was all an act. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it was a joke on us? You were just having a good time? I was just about eaten by rats, and Olivia could have been smothered in a chimney on account of your joke. All that for nothing? Uh, look here, children. We're awfully sorry. We had no idea to what lengths you'd go. We ask you to pardon us. And naturally, the money is yours, all right? You have certainly earned it. You can keep your money! Why don't you give it to a hospital where they really do operate on little girls? In the den of hell, which is the lower regions of London, there is such a thing as a pure soul. A person able to remain honest despite squalor and misery and temptation. Don't touch my cake. Wow. This reporter encountered two such people, Orson and Olivia whose souls are so pure and so disarming that some unthinking adults don't realize the consequences of their actions and mistreat them. <laughs> An article on you guys in the Times! Only famous people have their names in the Times! <gasps> you know, this pastry is great. Hey, Teddy! You suppose the Queen read the article about us? <laughs> the Queen reads the Times every day. The Queen read our article? The Queen! Then she knows I was almost smothered in the chimney! <laughs> Suffocated, not smothercated! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.